Mafu Mafu. Mafu Mafu is a Japanese singer-songwriter with over a decade of experience as a music producer and discography of hundreds of songs to his name, who not only writes for anime, games, and other J-pop artists, but has also worked for big-name clients like Disney, Shonen Jump, and Pokemon. This is Ferd. Ferd is a dumbass! Now this all starts back in 2013, arguably one of the biggest years in music history for being, of course, the year that BTS debuted. But for me, it was the year I listened to Mafu Mafu for the first time. With an incredibly unique singing voice and songs that slap harder than an Asian mother with a bathroom slipper, Mafu Mafu introduced 13-year-old me to a whole new world of music and culture. But recently, I was catching up with the songs when suddenly, I had a thought. And that is where it all went wrong. See, I considered myself pretty familiar with what Mafu Mafu songs sound like, as they all have this certain distinct style. Now if I, self-proclaimed Mafu Mafu listener of almost 10 years, knew his music well enough with no other qualifications, could I also write a Mafu Mafu song? The answer is no. But what if I did it anyway? I wanted to make a Mafu Mafu song. A real, full-length Japanese song with instruments, lyrics, vocals. There was just one small problem with this, mainly that I know jack shit about making music. Writing a melody, never done that before. Making chords, composing music. Last time I learned music theory was eight years ago. Writing Japanese lyrics, I barely knew English. And mixing, I don't even know what this word meant. Plus, since I had the singing prowess of an asphyxiated sea slug, I needed a computerized voice to sing the song. Meaning I had to learn Utalu, a program with the exact same interface as Microsoft Excel from 2003. And best of all, I had no idea where to even start. Mafu Mafu, a man of many talents, many faces, and many sounds. <laughs> he takes on many forms, from global superstar to stay-at-home cat enthusiast, to entertainer, YouTuber, streamer, or even a different person entirely. But to make a Mafu Mafu song, first we need to understand who is Mafu Mafu as a singer and a songwriter. Mafu Mafu began his singing career as an utaite, a singer who covers Japanese songs and posts them online. And if you're a fan of Japanese music, you might know artists like this already. But what makes Mafu Mafu's voice so unique? familiar with Mafu Mafu before, if you just briefly scroll through his YouTube channel, the first thing you'll probably notice is that he has made three songs about cats. The second thing you might notice is that he sings quite hot, and because of his respectfully batshit crazy singing range, he has become best known for his distinctly high voice. And every year, just when you think he can't sing any higher, he comes out with a new song to prove you wrong. So what that means is that for maximal authenticity, I need to make sure the highest note of my song is at minimum a G5, which if you're not a singer, sounds like this. No good way to summarize the hundreds of songs Mafu Mafu has ever made. And it's not just because the man's done about every genre from hard electronic rock to gut punching ballads, but the ability of his music to capture such a wide range of styles, sounds, and emotions while still being almost instantly recognizable as the Mafu Mafu song is not something one can simply box into some arbitrary generalization for a video. But if I were to do that, I'd put them into three categories. Slow songs around 100 BPM, happy or cute songs, which covers basically anything with nya in it, and depressing songs, which is pretty much everything else. And on that note, I had a slight problem. 
See, songs tend to have words, which means I had to write them. Clearly, his songs are all in Japanese and, uh, my Nihongo, not very Jozu. But that didn't stop me from deciding that for extra authenticity, my lyrics had to be in the flavor of his song lyric writing style, because I like making things difficult for myself on purpose. Now, if you've never read a Moth Moth lyric before, just know no matter how bright and upbeat the song sounds, in no time you'll be rolled up on the ground, tears streaming down your cheeks while aggressively banging your head. Hell, even the happy songs are depressing. Even this cute little song called I Wanna Be A Cat, perhaps a thinly veiled metaphor for escapism from the crushing pressures of reality. So we can basically recategorize his music into three types. Happy depression, depression, and headbanging depression. Now, it was my turn. Based on what we know about Mafu Mafu, we have a sense of the style, range, and BPM we'd want for our song. But that wasn't enough, since I wanted every element of this thing, every melody, instrument part, lyric to stank of Mafu Mafu song. But there's still the problem of I didn't know how to, you know, write music. So I then spent weeks watching every music tutorial the algorithm would spit at me and a whole month exclusively listening to Mafu Mafu songs, hoping all his musical wisdom would just latch itself onto my head like some sort of brain tumor. I wrote down his frequently used chord progressions, keys, typical song structure, the kind of instruments he uses and when, trying to find as many patterns as I could so I could steal them later. And the result was 20 pages of truly riveting commentary on his music videos. Some parts more helpful than others, but most of it was just complete utter nonsense. Uh, funny enough, just two days after I finally started writing the song, Mafu Mafu announced he was going on hiatus. As if the whole world was trying to tell me this was an objectively terrible idea. I was literally like, Yo Mafu, my favorite composer, I'm writing a song so I can be just like you. And Mafu Mafu himself was like, nah mate. Fuck that, I'm out of here. So we need to set the goal straight here. Am I trying to make a song that sounds like Mafu Mafu himself wrote it? Absolutely the fuck not. You see, Mafu brain big. My brain small. So if you thought that was the plan, uh, you're stupid. I want to be more like a poorly made remix of all his songs combined. If the person listening to it was a sleeper mostly deaf. You say you have so when I first pitched this idea to a friend, they said to me, why don't you start with something easier? And I said, Yeah, you're right. I mean, doesn't matter. It's too late, and he made the video. You know when you're listening to a song and you have the in the background? That's called a chord. A song is made up of many chords that repeat. Think of them as the glue that holds everything together, like the bun to your hot dog or the bread to your ice cream sandwich. So to explain how to make chords, you sort of need to know music theory. But don't be scared. I've already watched three hours of YouTube videos, so you don't have to. Here's everything you need to know in 30 seconds, go. This is a note. A sequence of notes is called a scale. This is a major scale. It has eight notes. Start on the sixth note and you get a minor scale. Major happy, minor sad. Add two more notes on top and that's a chord. Normally a chord has three notes, but YouTube man says it's for new. You basic bitch, white, red, plain, pickle, peasant, fuck. But if you take the middle note, move it up an octave, and then add another note, ah, advanced. Now add a fifth, sixth, seventh note, and you're a professional, expert, elite, artiste. Give it a fancy name like G flat, half diminished, seven sharp, flat, five, sus, four, and you're all done. So the first step is to decide the scale, or key, of the song, which forms the basis for our chords. Each chord is numbered based on its position in the scale and has a certain function. Uh, you can think of them like siblings belonging to the same family of notes. And now the question is, how do we choose which ones we want to use, since like all families, some children are better than others? 4, 5, 3, 6 makes the Japanese pop chord progression, which you can usually use by default if you don't know what you're doing. And if that doesn't work, just wiggle the notes up and down until it doesn't sound like trash. Now, just copy-paste the same thing over and over again, because you can't be bothered to make new ones, and congrats! You are now 1% done with the whole song. Wait, what? So for your 
information, there's a lot more to songs than people think. Example, songs are like onions. Onions have layers, songs have layers. We already have the main melody and chords, but for a Mazu song, we still need to add drums, bass, guitar, the second guitar, the third guitar, the fourth guitar. But that was no issue for me, because thanks to the notes I'd taken earlier, I knew exactly what kind of instruments to use. But how do you write a catchy drum beat or a cool guitar part when you've never played one before? How do you know what instruments to use and where to put them? And other questions that I had no answers to. But as it turns out, there's actually a lot you can get away with without actually knowing anything. Don't know how to write a drum part? Drag and drop one straight into your song. Want some groovy chords but have no sense of rhythm? No worries, there's a built-in tool that'll make it for me. And if the part still sucks, just turn down the volume until it's barely audible so you can convince yourself you didn't just waste four hours for nothing. Now, I'm not saying it's good to rely on shortcuts for everything, but I mean, this is perhaps the only time in your life where being a fraud is socially acceptable. Among us. Now, it was time to take everything I learned this past month and put it into practice. Mafu song's gotta have a sick guitar solo, especially if it's a rock song. Two hours later. Hey, listen. Plenty of artists reuse parts from their existing songs, and if Mafu Mafu can copy his own melodies, I can do it too. Cause that's how this works. So this is something you can find some variation of in virtually any Mafu Mafu song. It's a type of sound I can only describe as noises, but I think it's typically called a synth. Take this sound, for example. He calls this kira kira, which in English translates roughly into sparkly shit. One eternity later. shows what's basically his Krabby Patty secret formula for Mafu Mafu songs, which is a sound he likes to call... Now this one's pretty self-explanatory, so I'll have Mafu take over. In the first verse, Mafu songs often start with drum hits on every beat, while the rest of the instruments come in 8 bars later. This is where you hear a guitar in, say, your right ear playing a melody, while the guitar in the left ear is doing the groove. The dan da 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 the second verse and right before the chorus begins, there'll typically be a build-up that ends in three drum hits, which is, you guessed it, dun dun dun. If I had to use a word to summarize the roughly three months I spent on composing, it'd be confused. Confused melodies, confused arrangement, confused whatever the hell this was. I also wasted a lot of time just trying a bunch of funny sounds that I'd never end up using. But come on, when we got sounds called duck trumpet, peanut butter bass, and badass sensei, how could I not click on every single one? 
このなんか意味わからないものを入れてる時間が一番楽しい。Unfortunately, there was a limit to how many guitars and synths I could add before my CPU would literally explode. But honestly, I had quite a lot of fun and somehow ended up with a decent sounding game. And you know what? Maybe this wasn't so bad after all. Who knew music making was just a bunch of duck trumpets and note wiggling and. Among, among, among so I consider myself fluent in one language and half assed in two others. My understanding of Japanese is basic enough to, with reasonable confidence, understand a simple anime episode, tutorial, game playthrough, or some kind of activity. But the second they start going off script, monologuing, or God forbid, have a regular conversation, that's when I start shitting my pants. The pinnacle of mediocrity, commonly known as the JLPT N3. Now, the tricky part was figuring out how I was gonna write Mawful Mawful style lyrics when I don't understand what any of it means. Wait, you don't know what his songs are about? Uh. Oh. You're a fake fan? A casual fan, and I usually play music in the background, and if there's no subs, I can't understand anyways. Can't you just look up the lyrics? So how do you write lyrics in a language you don't know that well? Actually, easier than you might think. Being fluent in Japanese is hard. But you know what's something anyone can do? Copy paste! I took 25 Mafu Mafu songs, highlighted the most commonly used phrases, counted their frequency, put them into a list, and tried to stuff as many as possible into my lyrics. And though I probably could have just used a word cloud or something, I counted them all by hand. Because I have brain damage. But ideally, since I wanted to understand Mafu Mafu's writing style, I couldn't just copy things from my word bank. I actually had to read. And the problem with reading is that there's too much fucking kanji. What are these? What are these? What are these? Usually, if I'm reading a book in English and I run into a big word, I stop reading. But since I didn't have that option, I actually ended up learning a lot of fun new vocab. Clearly, I was ready. So over the next few months, I drafted the lyrics while cross checking two dictionaries, one thesaurus, and four different online translators, then handed it to my confused Japanese editor to clean up after my mess. But what about the content of the lyrics? Like, what's the song actually about? Mafumafu's head is massive, so his lyrics are very meaningful and often very metaphorical, use symbolism from multiple cultures, and cover a huge range of topics. But I wasn't gonna do that, because while I could steal some Mafuish phrases here and there, Mafumafu's lyrics are a reflection of himself, his own values, and personal experiences, which I don't have. And a person's song should be drawn from their own life, not someone else's. So, unrelated to that, the original concept for my song would be a composer who can't finish writing their song. Previously, whenever I'd run into any sort of problem, there's usually always a way to make it sort itself out. Don't know rhythms? Have a computer! Make one for you! Nihongo not Jozu? Copy a line from another song and change the verb tense. Melody sucks? Move the notes up and down until it's not disgusting. Chords suck? Move the notes up and down until it's not disgusting. Doesn't sound like a Mafu Mafu song? Add more guitars. Still doesn't sound like a Mafu Mafu song? Add more synths. Already have synths? Add more synths! But there's still one more step to songwriting that we haven't touched on yet. It's a bit like cleaning the toilet, but for music making, because it always seems like no one ever wants to do it themselves. Simply put, audio mixing is about balance. You can't take a head of lettuce, a bottle of ranch, a tomato, and a cube of Parmesan cheese, put them in a bowl, and call it a Caesar salad, because it's not a cohesive whole yet. You have to mix them together. Kill myself. But despite how important it is, mixing is something the average person never pays attention to. So trying to do it felt like learning how to walk for the first time. I must have learned more in half a month than I did in my entire last year of college. There are so many words I'd never even heard of before or had no idea what they meant. Now, here comes the real problem. When you're drawing, you have something you want to draw, say a nose. When you compose, you have a melody you want to write or some sound you want to add. But with mixing, I didn't know what the fuck I was supposed to be doing. But luckily, for every problem that exists in this world, I can always turn to random mans on YouTube to tell me exactly what I need to do. 
Today we're going to be learning all about compression. Lots of people give you specific numbers to aim for, mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15 milliseconds, whatever. Uh -huh. I actually much prefer to just uh, pretend this dial has no numbers on it at all it and just set it until it sounds right. Typically for me, that's oh, a longer gonna, attack. So you're not going to tell me. I'm just going to loop this first phrase so that you can hear if I make the attack really short, the word sort of just mushes away. Really long, I get a really punchy transient. I've been drifting. I've been drifting. I've been drifting. So I hope you could hear that when we had the really short attack time, the start of that word just turned to mush. But you can see this visibly on the trace here, but use your ears as well. But, but what if I don't have ears? I've been drifting, drifting away. So after watching about a hundred different mixing videos, I spent a few more weeks, which then turned into months, fiddling around with buttons until I managed to make my song sound even worse. Yeah, it turns out if you want to mix well, you need to have ears, which was clearly not my forte. Turning dials randomly and hoping for the best. But just when I thought everything was hopeless, I realized there was still something I could do. Something that I actually could have done from the very beginning. I gave up. Now, although I wrote the vocals with Mafu Mafu's voice in mind, clearly the actual Mafu Mafu wouldn't be singing my song. Thank God. But I still needed someone to sing it, or in my case, something. More specifically, a voice synthesis software known as Utau, and I'll explain what that is using something everyone can understand. Somebody wants to be the world is gonna Miku is one example of a voice fink, but to make her sing whatever you want, you need to use a program called Vocaloid. So Utau is like the same thing, but for poor people. So, remember this. I needed a computerized voice to sing the song, meaning I had to learn Utau. I may have lied. I wrote the script before actually trying Utau, and uh, turns out if I actually went through with it, I might have gone insane. But first, I've been using Utau for seven years, and my covers sound like Beyonce sang them. But nobody asked you. Let me explain. Setup wasn't that bad, thanks to this handy tutorial series. Although it was made six years ago, trust me, everything works exactly the same as it does now. All I needed was to go to the Utau page and pick my favorite voice bank and download Utau from the official website. So if I just open the program, it should be working like any other software, right? Oh, what's that? Plugins. The fuck is- Jesus fucking Christ. From installing Utau to researching which plugins to use, to downloading four different ones that were supposed to do the same thing, to giving up after none of them work took me roughly three hours. But then, I stumbled upon Open Utau, an unofficial, more modern-looking version of Utau. So just for fun, I tried it out and it took me 10 minutes to get it working. Needless to say, I wasn't going back. Well, have you ever considered that maybe you're just bad? Do you not know what a tutorial is? Ever heard of a Google search? Where's some app that I still animate with MS Paint? Why don't you just use SynthV? So programs like Vocaloid and Utau let you tune your voice bank. The better your tuning is, the more human the singing will sound. It's the reason why some covers can sound emotional and expressive, while others sound like Mark Zuckerberg. Smoking beats. Sounds cool, right? Well, if mixing is as enjoyable as counting all the staples in your stapler, tuning is about as fun as bashing your head against a block of concrete. One eternity later. See? Instead of sa sa sa, it's sa sa sa. Can you hear the difference? Cause you'd better. This took four fucking weeks. <laughs> so with the vocals added, FL Studio almost done buffering, and the mixing as good as it was gonna get, I was done. Right? See, this whole thing ended up taking so long that I started retroactively learning about things that I should have done way earlier. For example, I was about 70% done with the song when I found out you can make the guitar play more than one note at the same time. And about 90% done when I realized I might have accidentally made the song a bit too hot. 
kind of like learning the material for a class as you're taking the final. But even worse was when I'd finally finished writing the song and realized it didn't sound like a Mafu Mafu song. That's right, with one foot on the finish line, I had lost sight of the original purpose of this project. So in a last ditch effort to make my song that wasn't a Mafu Mafu song be a Mafu Mafu song, I had no choice but to put the Mafu Mafu into the song. Do what? So, Mafu, what do you want to name the song? He can't talk. But I can, and I already had the perfect idea. Music is hard. Just kidding. Mafu Mafu song names are in Japanese, so first I had to make some adjustments. But as I played back the finished song from beginning to end, while it did sound like a song, which is probably more than I could have hoped for, I couldn't help but think to myself, that's it? The last time I uploaded a video was May 2022, and somehow an entire year had passed since then. All for me to make a video that couldn't even live up to its title? All the months I spent squatting in front of my desktop, writing notes, watching videos, screaming about tuning, mixing until 5am, screaming about tuning, simply became time that I'd never get back, until what was driving this project wasn't passion, but the burden to succeed. But the bar just keeps growing higher. When everywhere you look, the people around you, when the people you look up to, envy, aspire to be like, are all the best and brightest, the road ahead seems insurmountable and hopeless. When the pressure weighs down on you, you forget the little things. The times when you, a bright-eyed naive fool, stood atop Mount Stupid and patted yourself on the back for coming up with the banger melody. When you confidently boosted the high end of every guitar by 10 dB, EQ was not a mixing tool, but a drumming canvas. When you played Russian roulette with compression knobs, or marveled at the genius of a lyric your Japanese editor couldn't even understand, you were not, but you were free. But since when did it stop being about having fun, and become about chasing after the best possible outcome? Even if you poured your everything into something with nothing to show for it, could it still be worth it? And if not, is that okay? I wasn't Mafu Mafu. Clearly, neither is anyone watching this. But sometimes, the most obvious things are the ones we need to hear the most. The only one who can make a Mafu Mafu song is Mafu Mafu. So did I waste my time? Did I not waste my time? Who gives a shit? In the end, maybe the real Mafu Mafu song was the friends we made along the way. 
the sleep we lost, the tears we shed, the carpal tunnel we developed, even with the frustration, the long rants, there were joys, there were gains, and there were back pains. Sure, the tuning isn't the best, the mix is hot garbage, and the guitar still sounds like wet ass, but hey, as long as it sounded like someone was trying to make a Mafu Mafu song, that was good enough for me. Cause let's face it, music is hard. But as Confucius once said, it's not about the destination. It's about the content we milk out of it. So have I lowered your expectations enough yet? Without further ado, please snap on your best headphones and allow me to present a song that nobody asked for. Music is hard. しよう子顔知ってる頃より諦めるほが大切それが持ち手書になる掃除服も僕は僕に嘘をつく手も知った曲信頼した曲が大胆ならばさ曲だとかまだ呼べるのか鏡に映った現実見えないに今日はバカな